The first written recipe that combined ground meat with breadcrumb and spices dates back to the Romans. But it's easy to imagine that this kind of dish that combines valuable meat with easier to find ingredients probably dates back further than that. Nowadays, you can find meatloaves flavored with all sorts of things, but today I'm gonna to show you an Italian-style meatloaf that's flavored with sausage, tomatoes, and Parmesan. And we're gonna start by making a tomato sauce. And we're actually gonna cook the meatloaf in the tomato sauce, so it's almost like a braise. And we're gonna make our own very fast sauce using canned tomatoes and a little garlic. Now here I have five cloves of garlic. Now to slice a clove of garlic, you have to peel it first and try to leave it whole. Don't smash it. And then using a sharp knife, just very carefully thinly slice the garlic. Mm, there we go. Now to cook the sauce, we're just going to use a medium saucepan over medium heat. And I have a tablespoon of olive oil in the pan. And it's just shimmering now, so I'm going to add the garlic. We're just going to cook the garlic for about a minute until it's fragrant and it starts to brown a little bit around the edges. So the garlic has been cooking for about a minute and you can see it's softened and starting to turn lightly golden around the edges. That's when it's time to add the canned tomatoes. Now I'm using two types of canned tomatoes here. This is a small 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. And then this is a big can, a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And the combination of the smooth sauce and the slightly chunky crushed tomatoes is the perfect consistency here. Now we're just gonna flavor the sauce with a little salt, quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and that's it for our super simple tomato sauce. We just need to let this simmer gently for about five minutes. And while that's simmering, we're gonna turn our attention to the meatloaf. Now, most meatloaves mix in breadcrumbs or crackers, which not only stretches the meat, but it also tenderizes the meatloaf. And today, I'm going to use saltine crackers because they have a very mild flavor, they're slightly salty, and they make a very delicate textured meatloaf. But we have to crush them first. This is the fun part. So this is 35 saltines, which is basically one sleeve minus one, which I always taste just to make sure they're fresh. I'm gonna put them in a big bag, leave a little air pocket, and now the fun begins, the crushing. Use a good rolling pin, you can use a meat pounder, you can use the back of a spoon. And add all the crumbs right to a nice big bowl. And we're gonna let them soften with a little bit of milk and eggs. So this is three quarters of a cup of whole milk and two large eggs. You just wanna stir this together till it's a nice, even consistency. And we're just gonna let it sit for about five minutes to really soften up those crumbs. The sauce has been simmering for five minutes. It doesn't really look much different, but the smell is a little more intense as the garlic has really permeated through those tomatoes. All right, so I'm gonna turn this sauce off, set it aside for now. And now let's focus on the meatloaf. So here are the saltine crumbs that have been sitting with the milk and eggs. You can see they're nice and soft. I'm just gonna take a whisk to it, really break up any big pieces of cracker that are left behind. Now it's time to add some flavor. I'm gonna start by adding a teaspoon of dried oregano, teaspoon of granulated garlic, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and last but definitely not least, some Parmesan. Now I'm gonna use fresh grated Parmesan and I'm going to grate it using a rasp style grater because those fine shreds will really melt into the meatloaf. And this is about two ounces of Parmesan, which when grated up in this fluffy style measures about a cup. All right, that's about it for the Parmesan. Now we're gonna whisk all this together. And I like doing this before you add the meat. That way all the flavors get evenly mixed with the panade and it's easier to combine the meat in with this mixture. That's it for all the seasonings. Now it's time to add the beef. Now this is a pound of 85% lean ground beef. I'm just gonna kind of pull it apart and drop it into the bowl. Now time for the sausage. So this is a pound of sweet Italian sausage and I've removed it from its casings. Although nowadays I often find patties of this stuff at the supermarket, that's almost easier to work with. And just like the beef, I'm pulling it into small pieces before dropping it into the bowl to make it easier to mix in the end. All right, now it's time to mix this all together and I like to take my rings off and really get my hands deep into the mixture because your hands are really the best tools for evenly mixing this all together. Time to shape this mixture into a nice tidy meatloaf. And as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna cook the meatloaf with the sauce. So I'm gonna use a casserole dish that just keeps everything nice and tidy in the oven. All right, so this is a nine by 13 inch baking dish and I've already sprayed it with vegetable oil spray. 
take the mixture, put it right into the center of the dish, shape this into a nine by five inch meatloaf. And I found if your hands are a little wet, the meat doesn't really stick to you as much. All right, so that looks pretty good. Gonna wash my hands. And now I'm gonna pour the sauce right over the top of the meatloaf. And it's gonna fall down into the dish all around it. All right. Now I'm just gonna cover the dish with foil, put it on a rimmed baking sheet just to catch any drips that might happen. And we're gonna bake this in a 400 degree oven for about an hour and 10 minutes until the meatloaf registers 160. It's been an hour and 10 minutes and it's time to check the meatloaf. Oh, you can smell it. Oh, it smells delicious. Oh, that is a good looking meatloaf. I love seeing all the little bubbles in the sauce around the edge. Again, we're looking for a temperature of 160 in the middle. There we go, 162, perfect. So here I have about a cup of shredded fontina and I shredded this on the large holes of the box grater. I'm just gonna sprinkle it right on top of the meatloaf and run it under the broiler for just a few minutes. That just gives it a nice cheesy crown. Oh, that's a looker. Look at that beauty. I love the melted cheese on top. Now, the trick here is you have to let this meatloaf rest for at least 15 minutes so it firms up. Otherwise, it'll just crumble apart. So let it cool for 15 and then we can come back and taste it. Meatloaf has rested for 15 minutes, and now I'm gonna take it out of the pan and transfer it to a cutting board. The sauce smells amazing. Now using a wide flat spoon, I'm just gonna pull out any grease that has pooled on the top of the sauce. Now to serve it, what I like to do is slice the meatloaf, then put it back into the sauce. So nice big slices of meatloaf, you know, about an inch thick or so. That smells delicious back into the sauce. Mm -mm. I'm gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of fresh basil. It's about three tablespoons of coarsely chopped basil. Mm. Now, time to taste. In my house, the end pieces always go first and I am an end piece lover. So, this one on the end is calling my name. Just a little extra sauce. <laughs> Mmm. It is so tender. Oh, and you can taste the sausage and the Parmesan, little kick of pepper flakes. It tastes great out of the oven, but if you happen to have any left over the next day, it makes the best sandwich. So if you want to make this meatloaf, remember, make a quick sauce using canned tomatoes, use crushed saltines in the meatloaf, and finish with a little fontina under the broiler. From Cook's Country, a fabulous recipe for Italian meatloaf. It's just like a big old meatball in a pile of sauce. It is so good. Mmm. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>